What's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And we have a really cool guest. I am so super excited to talk to Amanda this morning. Amanda Nelson's grown her, her TikTok uh, to over 500,000 followers. Uh, she's gone from, as you can see in the headline, food stamps to six figures, which I love that. And um, so you can tell she's not afraid to tell her story. And I'm excited to to hear it. Amanda, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks. Glad to be here. Hey, so where are you calling in from? I am in my home office here in Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. I, I yeah. love Austin. Austin's a, a very cool place. So oh, yeah. what what got you um, on to TikTok? Were you already initially, were you already creating um information products well excuse me you're selling a digital journal so you've been actually selling some physical products on amazon so were you doing any did you start monetizing the account after you began building it and you or was it all intentional from the beginning it was not intentional at the beginning i joined tiktok at the very early stages um this was during like very early 2020 and okay. i had no i no idea of wanting to monetize it um it just sort of ended up that way, but I was having fun at the beginning, you know? Yeah. Yeah, totally. So, um, this is, this is, this is really cool to talk to you because, you know, 98% of the time, and we've done over 600 interviews with our own clients. So people who have gone through our own training and, and most of them are brand new. As a matter of fact, I just got off of a, 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 tr a, a call with 300 people who've just decided to go through our blueprints and uh, two thirds of them are brand new, like have wow. never, ever done anything online marketing related. And um, and so it, it's there's there's so many people who are like coming into this 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 space, this world, some of them because of what happened with the lockdowns and everything, when they realize that you know, their job wasn't as, as secure as they thought it was, or right. that they just are like exhausted or just, they've been home and now they just understandably don't want to go back to work. Um, what were you doing before all this? And are you doing this now full time? Tell us how it kind of, tell us how it transitioned and eventually, and, and kind of where you're at now with it. Sure. I was working full time for somebody else. Um, the pandemic hit and I was furloughed. And then I took that time to uh, really get granular on like what it is that I wanted out of life. And I didn't waste any time doing that. Um, I saw the opportunity and saw how valuable that was for, for me and my potential business and the life that I wanted to make for myself. Right. So I literally took out a piece of pen and paper and started writing down like, what do I like doing? How can I monetize it? And so at the time I was really, really into travel. So I started traveling all over the state of Texas, wherever I could, because nobody was traveling. And I really wanted to help these like small mom and pop and Airbnbs with their bookings. And so that blew up. Then I created a course. Then I was making all this money getting paid to travel. And then people were knocking down my door saying like, how can I get paid to travel? So I was teaching other people. And then that's sort of how I started to grow initially on TikTok. Yeah. And then with that, I saw a huge need for, I mean, nobody believed in themselves. There were, there were just so many people out there with these like bullshit limiting beliefs. So I'm like, I'm giving you all of the information, but you still don't think you can do it. There's, yeah. there's a bigger issue here. So then that right. led me to pivot into my products that I have now with the wellness company that I founded, but that's okay. sort of a, in a nutshell. <laughs> wow. What an amazing journey. I can totally relate to that because. <laughs> both with my own limitations, mental and emotional in the past and, and working on that and breaking through and having more success, but also obviously having, I mean, we had a, over a hundred thousand people go through our challenge last year. I'm sure it's much more. We'll do all the stats at the end of this year, but um, it's many more this year. And, you know, we see people who from both so opposite ends of the spectrum. Some are so totally motivated mm -hmm. and they need absolutely no, you know, they need no accountability. They need no coaching. They need no mentorship. They need no hand holding. They, what are all the things, you know, the things that right. people say they want, the support, the community, these things, which we try to provide all of those things because again, you have that opposite side of the spectrum of people who just feel frozen and people who feel um, 
full, you know, frozen with fear, frozen with anxiety, frozen just with like, I've not done anything new in so long and frozen getting on video. And then we don't like the way we sound and we don't like the way that we look. And it's just this whole big slogging through our mm -hmm. own shit yeah. and, you know, our own, as you say, limiting beliefs. And, um, it's so hard to watch great people with great intentions who really need it, who really want it. And just, and just in their, and, and it's difficult as a, as a creator, because sometimes they even blame you. They say, you're, you know, there's not a lot of, there's not enough support. There's not this and that. Mm -hmm. And we have to kind of stand there and say, okay, you know, I believe you, I believe that's what you feel. Right. I believe that's what's real for you. But if we look around and we look at, you know, the spectrum of people, there's, there is, there's people who are, so, um, wow, what a passion because, so what have you found out? What have you learned? What can you share with us that can help <laughs> people who are looking to kind of turn their situation from kind of consumer on social media to creator and there's so many different businesses you could do it. We teach the core four ways to sell information, which is courses, coaching, or events, or you can do affiliate marketing, selling somebody else's products, mm -hmm. um, ideally information. But my God, it wouldn't matter if you're starting a hot dog stand. If your mindset is, is, is ain't there, it ain't there. Right. So how can we learn from you today about how to break through some of that stuff? If that's the focus of your work lately. I think for me, it really comes down to mindset. Um, you're going to hear, I mean, if you want to go from consuming content to creating content, you actually have to want it and you have to believe that you're going to be able to do it, right? So if you are the kind of person who says, you know, uh, must be nice for them or I'll never be able to have that, uh, you probably won't be able to have it, right? If you don't think you're going to be worthy of that someday, then you won't be. You have to change your mindset into saying, you know what? I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I do think that I can get there. I do think somehow it's possible for me. Mm -hmm. When you start there in literally anything you want to fucking do, you're going to come out on top. You're going to be successful. You're going to be more successful than you are if you're just sitting on your couch judging other people being like, oh, it must be nice or there's no help for me or I'll never be able to. Right. Like, like, like the logo says from food stamps to six figures. I was on food stamps and welfare when I was 19. Um, I didn't, I didn't marry rich. I didn't have a rich family. Half of my family still is in trailer parks and is in low income. I'm, I'm doing it because I physically had to change my surroundings. Take a look at, you know, take just an inventory of my life and say, is this how, is this how I want to end up? Is this a story that I want for my life? And mm -hmm. it's not. And so I had to, <laughs> I had to make some changes. Yeah. Um, I think just, but then how, then I always get the question, okay, but how do you do it? And that's kind of where some of the, the products come in that I've created is just, you got to write it down, right? Like our mind is busy. Our mind is going through so much shit at all the, all the different times that like when you actually can get granular and write down what you want, um, yeah. that just, just helps a lot too, you know? Yeah. So start there. I, I love that. Um, it's, it's, it's great. Writing things down, getting clear on what you want. Um, when let's, let's, let's reverse engineer your journey because we're kind of looking at this, you know, we're looking at, at this woman who started, you know, really from scratch, you were on there, you were just consuming yourself mm -hmm. and you had this, this kind of, you know, you had this revelation that this was an opportunity. This was something that you could turn from just a place to go escape Mm -hmm. to a place to kind of focus and, and monetize and deliver value and create an income as a self-made person. Yeah. And so walk us through what that beginning of that kind of process looked like when you were on TikTok. How did you develop the confidence or how did you make that decision to make that first TikTok and, and really kind of start from zero followers, mm -hmm. which is such a scary place for so many people? It is. And sometimes we look at other people like, oh, they have millions of followers, but you have to remember like they also started at zero too. So just like humble yourself in that. Um, I was looking at all of these cool creators and I was like, you know what? I can do that. So that was the first step for me was recognizing in my mind that I could also do this and I could do it in my own unique way. 
Second, and especially if you struggle with being insecure in front of the camera or if you struggle with confidence, something that really helped me was um, not everybody is going to like it and that's okay. So recognizing that everybody has an opinion, but that doesn't mean you need to take that opinion on board as truth because mm. it's not. And I don't personally, I, I and a lot of people, you know, a lot of people don't like my language. A lot of people don't like X, Y, Z about me. Um, and that's okay. It really is okay. So step two is you have to be okay with recognizing I'm not everyone's cup of tea and that's okay, yeah. but I'm doing what makes sense for me yeah. you do what makes sense for you and we can it can be the symbiotic we can coexist right so yeah. it was just me looking at videos and being like you know what i can do this yeah. and i like to have fun so what are the things that i like to do that like light me up from the inside that i can make content on and some of the videos that like popped off really early went viral were just stupid like funny it wasn't educational it was just relatable content yeah. that people loved and then they shared it and they were like oh this is funny then yeah. and so kind of now i mean if you go to my TikToks, half of it is just shit that i like i mean i talk about like hamilton the musical i talk about like food like weird stuff um, right. i'm really into comedy but then half of it is also really educational right so it's like this is how you can step into your higher self in like a really disruptive no bullshit way especially if you're coming into this like wellness mindset self-development you know growth space and you're just like a beginner and you're like this is too woo woo for me i don't i don't know what any of this means i want to break it down i wanted it to be really digestible so it's a lot of that content too so it's like educational entertaining relatable just do it but you yeah. have to understand that like you can't just do it unless you think that you're worthy of doing it yeah so you yes and obviously those I like to tease apart those two, I call them the mechanics and the dynamics and the mechanics are very kind of, you know, they're, they're what everybody's focused on. And it's really the dynamics, which is the kind of bigger part of the iceberg that we all can't see just to use a very simple analogy that we all love and have repeated for many decades. The, the it's like, yeah, we all focus on that. Just tell me where to click. Tell me exactly what videos to make. Tell me exactly. Yeah. You know, well, so hold on a second. I won't, you don't have to tell me. I'll just go copy others uh -huh. and just do them exactly as they do them. And just, you know, just again, I it, just a total focus on nailing the mechanics and then, oh crap, my account got banned. Well, because you know, TikTok's algorithms are probably looking at it as spam content. It's just looks like it's just the same thing over and over again and it's like well hold on a second now i'm now i'm banned now this is a scam now that you're right and, and, and before you know it like i never had a chance because my mind i was focused only on the mechanics and so the dynamics how i react to a situation and also how i approach something if I'm approaching it as just a look, I'm just going to throw spaghetti at the wall and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's kind of like the difference between if, if you're driving an Uber for, and you're using somebody else's car. And if you're driving an Uber with your own car, mm. it's like, if you treat your business, like you're just driving in somebody else's car and you don't give a shit, that's, it's not going to work. That's not mm -hmm. a long-term strategy. But if you get into that baby and treat your business like you're fit, like the only car you have and you got to make money with it every day, mm -hmm. those people keep their cars so clean. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about like a Kia. You get in that thing, it's like a Benz. Like it's yeah. just yeah. detailed. And, um, and so, but sticking kind of with, so we know the dynamics are important. We'll keep circling back. Would would you recommend that somebody mixes in non on topic content that what you just said was I kind of do content that's on topic, like around my, uh -huh. my core topic of mindset and personal growth. But I also mix in some comedy stuff. And I also mix in some stuff that's completely off topic, just testing it in, in hopes that maybe it might take off. Is that something that that you're that you advocate for? No, I do not advocate for doing that if you want to grow an audience. I advocate okay. for doing that if you want to grow a community. If you want people to be like, "Oh, this person's a regular Joe and we have all these things in common," and you are looking to make a long-term play, build a community, have people follow you, maybe introduce something that you want to sell later down the road because people buy from people, as you know. 
then do that. However, if you want to grow really fast on TikTok, do not do that. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, my When I very first started on TikTok, like I was doing Texas travel, that's all I talked about. And I was able to grow hundreds and thousands of followers. Mm. I mean, overnight, very quickly. Then once I started introducing other things in the mix, it's like, I don't want to do Texas travel forever. Uh, TikTok was like, nope. So I was losing thousands of followers every single day because that stuff doesn't interest people who are it, who are really like Texas travel. They don't care about, you know, mind self, like mindset, higher self, all that shit. Yeah. Um, also, my husband was one of the first like eight employees at TikTok ever. And he uh, pretty much said to me because he does a lot of like cybersecurity. He was like, you know what? Um, if you want to. And I asked him all the time, can you help me? Can you tell me? He's like, oh, we don't know anything. But he told me one day, he's like, if you want to do like a long term, why don't you start talking about yourself? Like be a real human, right? People like that shit. Like just be more authentic. And I was like, say less. Like I don't have any issue in, in bringing in more of that into the fold. And so I'm just doing it for that community aspect. But if you want to grow, you got to focus on one or two things. TikTok does not like deviation. Okay. Okay, great. So um, your your 60 days away account is the account where you were doing the traveling on? No, the 60 days away is the wellness brand that I founded last year. Okay, okay. Because I, I see that and people are making comments about the fact that it looks like you don't have your face all over that account. Is is that is that right? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Can you talk, can you say more about that? I mean, why yeah. is that? And that, that tends to be attractive to some people because they're looking for ways that maybe they could potentially, and even, is it a strategy? Is it a better strategy? It's not just about, they're always trying to get out of going on camera. It, when is it a sensible strategy to not totally. have your faith all over a particular brand or an account? Yeah, I think uh, it's personal preference in terms of strategy. I had a pretty large following on my own Exploring Amanda TikTok, where it would be really easy for me to be like, hi, I sell a product now and here it is, because I already have an audience who would buy it, but I didn't want to become, I didn't want my page to just become sell, 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 sell. Okay. So I created a different page for it where I can not be the face because I can be the face on exploring Amanda and just be like, Hey, here's my journal. Here's my cards. Here's my, all my other products and sell that really easily. Uh, but I was up for a challenge. I was like, I want to yeah. start something from zero again. I want to see if, you know, now in 2022, TikTok is clearly different. So let's, let's try something different. And so I will put my face up on that account once in a blue moon and just be like, Hey guys, remember me? It's, it's Amanda, but I don't yeah. want that to, I don't want that to be me because I want to grow it into a bigger thing where if I want to have, you know, my employees step in, they'll be familiar with their faces as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just personal preference really. You know, I'd love to explore, you know, just comment on that because there are, the, what's appropriate for one particular phase may not be appropriate for the next. And what's right. appropriate for one person might not be appropriate for the next. Just because somebody's doing it differently doesn't mean that somebody's doing it wrong. Right. Just because you're going to do it different doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. And I love that you said I was up for a challenge. Yeah. Because what I, what I, what I experience a lot of times with clients is that they really are looking for that. I want it step by step and I'm not going to deviate. And that's not specific. I really need you to tell me exactly what to do. And what I've found in marketing is everything's a test. So even right. if I did tell you what to do, I'd be kind of telling you what to test because mm -hmm. there's no way I could put a guarantee on that. And so how, how have you gotten comfortable with taking on new challenges and being okay with finding out the results on your own? Once you realize that you cannot grow in your comfort zone, that's where you start to see changes. So speaking of, you know, kind of piggybacking off of what you said on testing, uh, I mean, I, at the beginning of the account, I, and still honestly post maybe like seven times a day. It's, it's my own form of AB testing. I want to see what yeah. works and what doesn't. And so I'll use different methods that you probably can't pick up unless you're really hyper analyzing the video like okay she started with that and then she and then she used these hashtags and then she put text on this one but didn't put text on this one right yeah. i'm still trying to figure out what works um and not every video has to take off because they're hitting a separate set of people depending on the hashtag so i'm just i mean i'm constantly iterating 
because yeah. not everybody has, I mean, we have formulas that are proven to work. I know for a fact, I can do two things on TikTok and I will have, I mean, I'm sold out on Amazon right now because I had a video go viral on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I knew it was going to happen, but I was like, let's just see if it's still valid. Right. That's so always, I know it's always, it's always easy to say <laughs> that you knew it was going to happen after it happened. I know. <laughs> now you're going to have to tell us how you knew it was going to happen and how you did it. I can't let you off the sure. hook like that. So I post on 60 days away and then I post on exploring Amanda. I go in more, I go more in depth on exploring Amanda and I tell my story. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people already know my story, but I think, me being able to be so vulnerable and share kind of where I came from helps other people to know, well, shit, maybe I could do this too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think by sharing my story and getting like pretty vulnerable, I'm able to open up to a new audience that may have not knew me before. And then they're like, okay, well, how do I do it? And I'm like, well, here are the tools that I used. Like, I created these products because my goal is to just inspire as many fucking people as I can. You, you don't have to like it. It's not yeah. about liking me. It's about this product. I mean, I, I sit here and tell you all the messages that I get every single day about, I manifested a car. I mean, people at the car dealership sending me pictures because they wrote it down in the journal every day and they visualized it. Like I manifested this relationship. I was able to bring this into my life, a million dollar home, all of these things, right? And yeah. so when I really am in the mood to like go deep, that's kind of the, that, that's kind of what has worked for me in the past. And, and you're doing that on the Amanda account, the personal account you say? Yes. And, and, and then, are you going live? Are you going no. live? Are you, you're just doing that in a little bit of a longer than a 15 second video, just a video where you kind of just share a little bit more about you and let people see you more vulnerable, more, let them get to know you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. telling your story. I mean, it just, golly, I got to get, man. <laughs> I, I thought I was going to hear the secret, Amanda, but you know what? It's like, it's like, it just works. You know, yeah. it just, what I, you want to know why? Because as much whatever, you know, AI or machine learning or other bullshit that we're going to come up with that's supposedly going to replace human beings. Guess what? Not in this lifetime. Right. Not in this lifetime. Yeah. And not a lot of people, not a lot of people are comfortable being vulnerable. And I feel like if, if that's one thing that you take away from this today, it's just like, just try it, just try to be more vulnerable and see that you will have more people coming to you. Thank you for sharing your story. God, I really resonated with that. God, I really needed that today. Yeah. I mean, just try it. Right. I know it's, it's great. It's crazy, man. It's, it's, you know, I started telling my, my story about my drug addiction and, uh, heroin addiction and being homeless and being just real struggle, then g getting clean, sleeping on my dad's couch. This was 12 years ago when I, 2008, when I got clean and then kind of had the fog settled for a year. Mm -hmm. And when I got into this business of, you know, cause I started with network marketing and then came online like, Hey, I'm, I don't, I don't have any more friends and family to chase. I need to figure out how to generate leads online, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and it was like, I was faced with that moment of do I do I develop my personal brand and tell my story or do I just stay a corporate kind of mouth, you know, mm -hmm. where I just give people that superficial line of bullshit, make sell a dream when I'm probably living a nightmare. And I, I, you know, one day I got inspired in a specific way and told my story and was, it was terrifying, told people the truth about what I was doing, like why I was doing it, mm -hmm. what I had been through led me up to that point that I wasn't rich and that I wasn't, you know, this mega successful person, but I'm, I'm step by step. And man, it just, I never turned back because of the response from that, as you just described was so powerful. I never turned back. Mm -hmm. I never doubted being real again. I never doubted telling the truth again. And, and, and I've built my reputation for the past 12 years. And now because of telling my story, 
I've created windfalls of cash like you're talking about through various campaigns and products that I've sold, but I've also built a long-term reputation yeah. in this industry to where, you know, 90 something people inside of our company trust me. Thousands of our clients trust me mm -hmm. because I've been consistent and and not bullshitted them. And so there's that element that I don't know how to explain it. Gurus try to break it down. Marketing geniuses try to make all these formulas for why storytelling and being bugging real with people works. I don't know why we overcomplicate it, mm -hmm. but it just, it works and it's so powerful. Just yeah. telling your story somehow, some way. You don't have to do it perfectly. It doesn't have to sound like Tony Robbins or Russell Brunson or any anybody who's you – know, anybody who makes you feel like you have to ha tell it in a specific way or it's not going to be powerful enough. You just begin to do it, and over time, you, 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 you simplify and you clarify it. Yeah. And also people don't want to see perfect every single day. Like it's better if you start to tell your story and you fumble and you're like, Oh God, sorry. I didn't mean to say that. I mean, that makes you oh. more real and people relate to that because we are just looking for human connection. So mess up, fumble, but at the end of the day, cut the bullshit, just cut the bullshit and start talking. Yeah. Does one need to have a really a inspiring story to be vulnerable? No, Gloria, it's not about having an inspiring story. It really is just knowing how to tell a story, I would say is probably the better, you know, the better way to do this because you, you have amazing things that have happened in your life. Gloria, you look like a, an experienced woman. You look like you've been through some things before. I'm sure you've had some inspiring moments in, in marketing. The things that work best are analogies and metaphors and stories. And so the reason why we tell stories, and Amanda, I'm assuming this is the reason why you tell, it's not just, hey, I'm getting out here just to tell my story because I need to air some dirty laundry. I am telling a story to make a point. And so my the story that I'm telling, I'm tying in to whatever point I'm making. So it's not just about, hey, here's my life story. I'm going to tell my story in a way that ties into the product that I'm promoting. So remember, it's not just about me as a person. It's how I learn how to market the stories that I tell and tie them to the products that I'm promoting. W what would you add to that, Amanda? I think you said it beautifully, but I think, you know, oftentimes I get a lot of people who say the same thing of, well, I didn't, you know, I, I came from a really good home and I don't have a lot of childhood. I'm like, that's okay. That's actually great. But yeah. everyone has been through some shit. Like think of the things that you have been through Gloria, that actually were hard and made you who you are today. You had to go through those in order to be here. And somebody else can probably relate. So if you feel comfortable enough with being vulnerable, which is not comfortable at all, remember, uh, then just start talking about it because you never know who you can attract. And it's not even about selling anything. It's just, I want to inspire somebody else to be able to tell their story. And you can inspire one person. So yeah, that's a, that's a question that often comes up and it's, it's not surprising, you know, but just start talking. Just start talking. Yeah. P people have heard me sharing my story and weaving it into my, my marketing and my content over the years and, and, and really gotten a bad, they caught a bad, the they, sorry, hold on a second. They caught a bad case of comparisonitis right. and thought that, you know, oh man, does my, do I need to have a story that sounds exactly like yours? And it's like, how do you deal with comparisonitis? How do you deal with, we all go through it because it's a, it's a survival skill. Mm -hmm. We, we, we look, we model, we compare. It's how we know if we're growing, develop, like there's ways that comparing is really healthy. And then there's, there's times when it becomes maybe more destructive when it yeah. begins to paralyze us and so forth. How do you deal with it? I mean, perfect timing for you to even ask that question. You, you have no idea how much this has been coming up lately. I just yesterday was on the phone with like attorneys and copyright infringement. Like people are trying to put up their products on Amazon. That's the same exact as mine. And uh, I look at it first as validating um, because wow, God, I'm flattered, but I'm doing something right. And you, you're trying to do it. And it's kind of this comparison thing. But um, I think if I'm looking at somebody and starting to feel that like comparison creep up, um, 
I can't ever do what that person is doing exactly how they do it. Just like you can never do what I'm doing exactly because we have different life experiences, right? Yeah. So we are completely different people. Um, so really focusing on what do you have that you can focus on that that person doesn't have. And that could be, I mean, let's talk about like the most famous person you can think of. You're like, well, I don't have a jet. I don't have, no, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what do you have? What are your life experiences that you have that that person doesn't have? And then use that to bring it in and tie it into your marketing because yeah. that person can't talk about that in their marketing because they've never been through that, right? Like that person has a completely different marketing plan because they're talking to completely different people. So really bring it back to yourself. What do you have and how you can tie that into the differences that that person doesn't have? So that's what I do. I, I love that. And, you know, I got a, I got a telephony story as uh, this one's for the fellas. Um, the, we all, the grass is always greener on the other side, at least that's what it appears from a distance. Of uh -huh. course we get there and it's artificial turf. Uh -huh. You know, Wilt Chamberlain was famous for, you know, being, the most promiscuous bas basketball player in history that we know of. It's rumored and re somehow recorded even, I think on his Wikipedia page, that he's he's been with over 10,000 women. Jeez. To most, to most men, that's like the dream, right? And in his Wikipedia, you'll read that he was quoted saying, what I rather would have what I would have rathered have looking back on it was been with the same woman 10,000 times. Mm. And the, the power of that to me as a man is that there's this, you know, there's this fantasy as we're growing up and men are like given this kind of image that, you know, having lots of, you know, fun with lots of different people and all this is the, is the way to happiness. And here's the guy who's done it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he's telling us that, the grass is not greener on the other side that yeah. he would actually rather have what maybe you have. Uh, some of us who have been married, I've been with my wife for 14 years. And so it, it it's when you ask that, what does a celebrity have that I don't have a lot of times? What, or what do I have that they don't have? A lot of times you have your freedom, you mm -hmm. have your peace, you have your privacy. There's, there's, you, there's so many things that oftentimes we have right in front of us that even going back to Gloria's question, you know, that we have in front of us that we can use at our disposal, right? We can use it and we just miss it because again, we want something yeah. that someone else has or think we should be doing it a different way. When my message is, is learn, realize that you have everything already inside of you. Totally. You actually don't need anything from anyone else. You have everything you need to be successful right here, right now. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about your the journal. Did you make that yourself? Was that something? Because this is a product. And although we kind of teach how to market digital products, having a physical product like this is a unique, is a unique situation. I like it. Can you tell us how it came about? Yeah, sure. And thank you. I self-published it last year. Um, I just didn't, I mean, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I, I mean, I just asked people, I Googled, I mean, I talked to people. I just said like, Hey, can you help me? Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Do I trademark it? Do I copyright it? What's an ISBN number? How do I get the barcode? Right. I didn't know any of that. Yeah. Um, and so I figured it out. I self published it and, uh, it's been my number one product so far. It's been great. Congrats. Uh, thank you so much. But that's something like the very first page I talk about it too. I say you've always had it inside of you. You've mm. always had it inside of you. It's how bad do you want it? That's yeah. that's the real question. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm super stoked. I mean, I help thousands of people. It just it's a really good feeling. I've always I've always heard people say to me, I don't know if you've heard this too. People just, you know, it's all about helping people. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, then I started helping people and I was like, shit, it is all about helping people. Like I finally get it now, I get it. It's just this giving back, it feels good. It helped me. And so I'm like the, I mean, I, I've always journaled. I didn't always love it. And so I just took things that worked out of like five to seven different journals. And I, I made it real. I said, how can I disrupt the wellness industry and put my personality into it? And you know, that's has a couple cuss words. There's adult language in all of my products. And so, I think people really like that because it's like, okay, you know, this girl's been through it. It's relatable. It's easy for a beginner. Um, there's guided prompts, there's daily activations, and it's just, it's a really fucking easy, 
you know, process that took a very long time for me to do, but you know, I threw it out there. It's been well received. I've got some questions about it. Yeah. So what is the, what is the focus or the purpose or what's unique about the number 60, 60 days? Good question. So as I was and just doing so this, everybody understands the name of your journal is yes. 60 days away. Okay. 60 so, days away. So that's why I'm asking the, the question as you're, yeah. as this, as this unique TikTok account that we have up on the screen right now is 60 days away. That's the one that doesn't have your face on. That's more unique to this particular brand and this particular product. So back to my question, what's, what's the number 60 about? Yeah, I, I like nerded out on all of the data, all of the science. And if, I mean, I have so many podcasts I can share with people about it, but right now the general consensus around forming a habit is anywhere between 55 and 66 days. At least that's what everybody is now agreeing on. Okay. Um, it used to be, you know, 21 and there's a reason for that. And then it was six months and there's a reason for that. Okay. And I got really into it and I was like, okay, cool. 60 days. Let's try it. So I, I tried it on myself. Okay. Um, about two or three times. So there were a lot of months before I even launched it or felt comfortable launching it because I wanted to make sure that, you know, it fucking worked. And like, I believed in the product. So I tried 60, 60 is kind of where everybody's landing in terms of forming a habit. Okay. To answer your other question, what you get out of it is what you put it like, what do you want? So you can create a new set of goals. Did uh, I ask now, that question? Did I ask well, it? What like, yeah, I think you said like, what's the like, what what can you get out of it, right? Well, I want to ask that question more powerfully. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> not what do you get out of it? Like, <laughs> I mean, yes. That first of all, that makes a lot of sense, and I think six. You know, even picking a a a number and sticking to it, I like having a number that you're aiming for because mm -hmm. it's like you can do it in sixty day cycles as well. You know, it's like okay, what do I do when that sixty days is over? Uh, totally. Start a new 60 days, <laughs> you know? Um, so I'd like to ask the question like this, what sure. are people experience? What are some of the, what is a, you know, a story or two or a common piece of feedback that people are getting from the results of focusing and doing this process that you've laid out for 60 days? What are some yeah. of the transformations that you're seeing? the biggest thing is like is there magic in here like how am i capable of doing this they were so i was so skeptical before i bought it and then holy shit, what did you do what did you put in here um i try to screenshot as many messages as i can and then i keep them in a folder in my phone so that i can just look back and remember like the work that i'm doing cool um uh, the car thing blew my mind that was insane i actually just posted a TikTok yesterday on my own personal feed talking about um the screenshot this girl sent me and she said last year I used it. She's like, I'm on my second one. I can't get enough. Um, I was in a dead end job. I was in a horrible relationship. It was very toxic. And I just want to show you. And she showed me the different pages of where she wrote where she wanted to be in 60 days. She yeah. visualized it. She showed me the section. She's like, I just moved to Dallas. I'm in the, my dream job. She's like, I'm, I'm in a great relationship because I left that other one. I bought a Louis yeah. Vuitton bag and I was like, good okay. for you. Okay. okay like girl. whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so a lot of people, um, financials, you know, I was able to like bring this opportunity into my life of uh, relationships is another one. So I wasn't able to be in the relationship that I wanted because I needed to work on my mindset. And now I'm with my dream person. We just got engaged because I kept writing it down in my journal. Mm. Uh, so whatever you want to bring into your life and make your reality, yeah. there's Intention, sections for right? that. It's power, exactly. it's the power of intention, the power exactly. of focus, the power of being clear about what you want and then mm -hmm. actually, actually writing it down, saying it, ask for it. Um, I mean, manifestation is when people hear that and I heard you use that word, I think they, because it's, it's been hyped up so far. A lot of people think that manifestation, the way that you probably, that you said it means there's no weeds in my yard or there's a Lamborghini in my driveway. There's a Lamborghini in my shit. There's no Lamborghini. This is a scam, yeah. right? But yeah. it's really, as you've walked us through over the past five or 10 minutes, understanding that this is a process of training the brain to really over 60 days, be hyper-focused on a specific goal. 
and and map out and process thoughts and emotions and and process them so they get out of the way so you can continue trudging down that path towards your goal. There's mm -hmm. so many hidden benefits to processing at your just your thoughts and feelings in your day or your week, whether it be writing or whether it be talking it out with somebody. Uh -huh. um, but gosh, you know, we, what you're doing is helping people have a relationship or begin to form a relationship with themselves, get clear, set intentions. I love it. And another thing that I want to point out, and I think everybody should go and get it and do it. I love it. And and so they can go to 60 Day Away on TikTok or 60 Days Away uh, dot com, I think in just, right. It's uh, it's actually, it's, we were just featured on the today show and business insider. So we're sold out of the journals on Amazon, but I have stock on my website, which is exploring Amanda.com. So you can get the journals there right now. <laughs> sold out people. Sold I have, out. No, I have some other products on Amazon, but the journal is clean, clean out. <laughs> Here's the thing that I want to point out. Okay. You have to be most excited about what you're doing and what i have gotten because remember this is a marketing podcast and we're oh, yeah. teaching marketing skills and i'm hyped up and excited about your product because you know what you've sold me on it by not selling but being excited about it and being oh, yeah. passionate about it and saying things that make sense and what i want to point out to everybody listening as we kind of wrap this up is that if you're not excited about what you're doing, don't expect anybody else to be excited about what you're doing. Right. If you're not passionate about what you're doing, then don't expect somebody else to be. And what, I, what I'm taking away from you and I'm able to identify with is that I can't expect anybody else to be more excited about what I'm doing than me. That meaning that if I got a shitty attitude or I'm not really excited about it, do I expect that some, and is it fair? Do, does it even make sense amongst the laws of the universe? Come on, right. that somebody is going to come and be more excited about my thing than me. And so if you're not excited about what you're doing, then figure out how to get excited about it. Like, like figure out how to just take the shit colored glasses off and put a more rosy colored glasses. Like let's, whether we got to get an attitude adjustment, however you need to do that. Right. Yeah. Whatever works for you. We're not shame and blame and telling you that you're doing it wrong. We're just saying that if that's the case, if you're not the person, if you're not the number one most excited person about what you're talking about and what you're kind of promoting or, 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 you know, what your topic is, then don't be surprised if others are not passionate about it, <laughs> you know, and passion doesn't have to look the same on every person, yeah. but a smile a little excitement in your tone, yeah. you know, a story to engage and inspire somebody's mind, you know, that's, that's all it takes, you right. know, but if, but if, but if you're not doing that, then it's hard to get excited about what you're doing. And what I wanted to say to you, Amanda, is I'm really, I've really got, I've really sensed and felt a lot of passion, excitement about what you're doing. And it makes perfect sense why you're succeeding like you are. Thank you. And, and, and it really is inspiring. And like, Thank you so much for your time today. I mean, I want to make sure that we respect your time and get you out of here on time. What what could you leave us with today? I mean, what what else haven't you said that you think we we should know about you and your journey? Oh God, <laughs> I know that's a big question. What a loaded question! <laughs> I know, I know. What how about uh, one thing? It's easier yeah. when I say what's one thing. <laughs> yeah, I think. For me and my journey and kind of my mission again is to inspire as many fucking people as I can is if if I'm leaving anybody with one thing, if you watch this, if you walk away with one thing, I want that to be, you have to believe in yourself first. You can't expect anybody, you can't expect it to be easy. You can't expect anybody to come in and do it for you. You have to take control of your own life and say, you know what, this is what I want out of my life. I gotta show up, I gotta be vulnerable, I gotta be authentic, all the things we talked about today but you can't do it unless you do it. Like physically taking action, just do it. And it's gonna be messy and it's gonna suck and be horrible the first couple of times. But guess what? You're doing it and you're getting better and you're growing and you're learning. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there, people, do it. <laughs> yes, don't, don't be afraid. And if you are, do it anyways. Exactly. All right, Amanda, thank you so much. It's been so fun and inspiring and now I'm all excited. And I got to figure out how to calm down. Okay. 
Um, but have a great day. Come back and see us again soon. I'd love to do a follow-up episode with you. Be legendary, stay legendary, and, um, and we'll talk to you later. Okay. Thank you. All right. See ya. All right, my friends, you can follow Amanda at 60 days away. She also has another account at exploring Amanda. If you want to pick up her journal or look at some more of her work, you can also go to exploringamanda.com. All right. Here's somebody um, who you now can add to your network. You can help lift her up, even though she seems like she's on a mountain. Remember, she started with zero just like you did or you are. So um, let's continue to lift her up, comment, you know, like her stuff uh, if, if you choose to follow her. Uh, but thanks for being here. It's Friday. These episodes are so uplifting to me, and I hope they are to you as well. If you're looking for more content, more inspiration, you're wondering what else you could be doing, obviously, you can go through or re-go back through any one of our courses that you've bought, okay, and that you're currently going through, and there's also over 600 episodes. You can also find these episodes over on the major podcast platforms on Apple Music and I think any of the other ones, I don't exactly know exactly where all of them are, um, but they're out there. I promise. Uh, we also upload these on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, and they're all here on the Facebook page. If you want a reminder of when we go live each Monday, text WUL to the number on your screen and we'll send you a little gentle nudge, never spam. And I don't think we've ever promoted or marketed anything to that particular list. So it's just one text in the morning, Monday through Friday, to let you know that we've gone live. If you want to be featured on the show, you can go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash featured. Um, and, and we'll try to get to you. But we've, we, 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 we have a long list of people who we've asked to be on the show. Um, so uh, we'd love to get your, your application to consider it, though. And if you want to take the 15-day challenge, go to the... 15daychallenge.com. If you've somehow just landed here and you don't know why you got here, you're welcome to take the challenge. Otherwise, my friends, we'll be back here for another episode on Monday like we always do. Get out of here. Have a great weekend. Be legendary.